Okay, uh, hello and welcome to the second video in this DAX video series uh, to cover the key concepts uh, shown here. Um, in the first video, we got through these first four tabs where we set up the scenario of a coworker has uh, built a, a model but hasn't done any of the analysis yet, and so we need to finish that. We have a list of um, requests by the consumers. Um, we went through and understood our, our model to see the, what we're dealing with in terms of tables and relationships and what the data uh, look like um, uh, to understand what we're working with. And uh, we also covered some uh, basic uh, calculations that you can do without writing any DAX at all using implicit measures, um, using quick measures where the DAX is written for you, or leveraging some of the uh, features available in the filter panel to uh, do a top-end um, analysis for top three products. So we're, we're able to meet some of the requested uh, analyses without writing any DAX at all. So in this video, we're going to get into row context, uh, which, which is a key feature here. Um, and uh, just I'll go through these, these key points real quick, and then we'll get into writing some expressions that uh, answer some of our other, uh, fulfill our, some of our other requests. So um, the, the key thing about row context is, is that basically um, row context means that inside the expression, uh, it, the calculation is aware of which row it's on, so you don't need to reference the row number. Um, unlike in Excel formula, we may put, you know, A1 plus B1, and in that case, we're specifying the row uh, to, you know, the cell and the row number of the cells to include. Um, in DAX, uh, this would be a, a DAX column expression, and in this case, all we have to do is reference column A and column B, and it already knows what row it's on, so there's no need to specify that. Um, We'll, we'll show you in a second um, how this works on a DAX calculated column, um, but it also can uh, exist inside of measures, um, inside of functions that maintain row context. Um, and so we'll, we'll see examples of those um, like filter or maxx uh, where row context is uh, available inside the, the calculation itself. Um, going to the website dax.guide is a great site um, to see uh, an explanation of all the DAX functions, and they also provide on their um, tags that show you whether, um, it, you know, if like if it's an iterator function like uh, like these, or and if row context is maintained or not. So it's a handy guide. I encourage you to to use it as you um, as you write DAX expressions. All right, so let's um, get into it. Um, if we look at our data um, in our sales table, we have um, some good information there. We have the, the, the quantity sold in one column. We have the price in another column, um, but we don't have the, the total sale there. So um, we want to calculate um, the total sale for, for each sale. And so we just need to multiply the quantity times the price. Um, as you get into this, um, we're going to first do this with a calculated column, and so DAX expressions can be are used to uh, in what are called calculated columns, which we'll show now um, in measures expressions, which is where you'll use them most of the time, but also in uh, table expressions. So you can write a DAX expression to return a whole table, and we'll probably do some of that as we're demonstrating some of the other concepts. Um, but the simplest uh, demonstration of row context is while you're, while you're on data view here in the sales table, just click on um, new column and I'll just write total sales and I'm just going to say column here just so that when we use it later in a visual we'll know that this is the one calculated with a calculated column. Um, and so what we can do is just say um, we want that quantity column. I can just start typing QTY and go down until I see the sales quantity. So again, that's a table uh, and column reference. And then I'll hit the multiply and then I'll do the price. And again, go down to sales price, hit tab. 
and then I'll hit enter um, and it will multiply um, quantity times times sales uh, times price um, and so again I didn't have to reference the row that it's on it understands what what row that it's on and, and calculates the correct value okay so once we have a calculated column and again you'll I'm gonna show you in a second that this is not the way you should do this calculation um, but it is good to know how to do calculated columns um, it's actually unnecessary to do this particular calculation this way there's an easier way that actually doesn't uh, take up any extra file size because um, now this this uh, column is calculated and, it, and is stored as part of your data model so these data are, are being permanently stored in your in your file but if we if we go back here and, and before we had um, a we have our measures table up here and similar to how we had a total quantity measure we can now write a total sales measure using the column so um, a really good trick is to um, so that your measure goes on the table that you want it to I've highlighted this one so if I hit new measure now it would put it here but the way to make sure of that is to right click on the table name and say new measure and that guarantees it'll go right where you want it okay so let's call this total sales um, and I'll just put col for column and then I can start typing sum that one's highlighted so I hit tab and then we put this on the sales uh, table so I can start typing the sales column and I can sum up the total sales column um, and hit enter and so now I've created just a simple sum of that calculated column um, and our request here is to get you know total sales by by uh, month and year so I'm just going to make a simple table visual um, and I'll put in this case I'll just use this year month column so I could put separately year and month and it would work the same I like to have that combined column and therefore I've got it all in one shot year and month you could change the formatting uh, of this and then I can simply add that total sales um, thing here and we we get our desired result okay um, so that's a simple use of a calculated column where row context um, is available and knows what's row, what row it's on the way that that measure that calculation should be done is actually using an iterator function so there's plenty of cases where you should use a calculated column and typically those involve where we want to use the result of that column in like the along the axis of a visual or as a legend right for coloring or or whatever so um, that's where calculate and calculated columns are, are required you can't put a measure uh, in one of those situations measures only go in the values area uh, of your visuals um, but that that applies here and so we we could write a measure here and so let's go ahead and do that and so these iterator functions are really powerful functions within DAX and you'll use them all the time uh, and they have this X at the end so there's sum X and max X and min X and count X and concatenate X it's, it's a really powerful family of functions um, and the nice thing about these is they maintain uh, row context so what we can do is write another measure and we're going to get the same result as this but we're going to do it completely as a measure such that we never needed to write that calculated column and I'm just going to call this one total sales because this is the one we're going to keep using in a whole bunch of future calculations um, and we're just going to put sum X I'll hit tab so that it auto creates the parentheses for me and these iterator functions have two parts the first one you need is a table and it can be a, a physical table so one of the tables in our model date or product or sales um, or it could be a virtual table and later we'll use virtual tables this one we're just going to go ahead and use our sales table hit tab there and then this is the expression so this is where we want to say okay what do you want to do on each row of that table we're going to do that same calculation that we did before where we're going to take the quantity and we're going to multiply it by the price okay and so now we've written a sum x expression we want to iterate over the sales table and on each row we want to multiply the sales times the price and what that's going to do it's going to create a virtual table um, where it has all these values stored or in, in virtual memory and then because this is a sum x it'll add those together 
if we had done a max x expression, again, it would create the same virtual table, and then it would return the maximum value from that virtual table. So we're doing sum x, so I'll hit return here and let it calculate, and then we will add that measure um, to it, and you'll see that we get the exact same numbers. Okay? And so this is um, because, in this case, all we're storing is the formula, and then it calculates wherever you use the formula, it doesn't require us to store that extra column of values in our file, and so it, it won't take extra file size. So, so definitely this is the recommended way to do this type of a calculation um, if it's only going to be used like in the, in the values area of it and not needed um, in a different role in a visual like, like a legend or along the axis. Okay, so in general, um, if it can be written with a measure, I usually tell people to do it as a measure, right? And only do calculated columns where um, you need it as a legend or on the axis uh, in a visual or, or as a row or, row or column heading uh, in a matrix, for example, um, or if you need it for performance where you need to pre-calculate something. Um, the, the nice thing about um, the, the as measures is, is that they will, will react to slicers and 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 that's certainly something you want to offer in your visuals you know calculated uh, columns um, and DAX calculated tables um, will only recalculate at uh, at when you refresh the data whereas measures are always dynamic and always are responding to your slicer selections for you know for example um, so if we had multiplied by this by some you know value in a slicer on our page it would dynamically recalculate whenever we change the value on that uh, for example okay all right so that's the total sales using both a calculated column uh, and a measure um, and so now let's demonstrate a a second uh, application of uh, row context um, using the filter expression so filter is a function you will use all the time. It's another really powerful function. Um, it also is an iterator and, and has row context. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to get the number of sales um, where the quantity is greater than one. So multi, multi sales there. So we're gonna go ahead and write a new measure. And so um, we'll say number of sales over one. And before I put the filter in there, um, I'm going to just go ahead and show you. You could use the a simple one of the simple aggregations is to do a count rows, and I'll do the count rows of of the sales table. Okay, and so I'll make that measure, and I'm going to put it in a um, I'll first just put it in a card visual, so this one, two, three. Um, and remember that we have you know 5,400 rows um, in that table, so we're, we're just go ahead and counting the number of, of rows in that table. Well, a filter uh, function returns a table, which is why I used this function, which count rows uh, is a calculation done on a table, whereas most of the other ones are done off of columns. Um, but so now what we can do is we could wrap the sales table um, inside a filter function. So similar to the last one we showed, the filter function, the first expression is a table. Um, and again, that could be a physical table like date, product, or sales in our model, or it could be a virtual table. And again, we'll do some of that later. Um, but now we can say, okay, I want to filter the sales table. And the filter function looks for it keeps rows that are true, right? So whatever expression we put here, it'll it'll it'll, it'll filter away any rows for which it's false. Um, so we're gonna going to say where the sales quantity is greater than one. So it's going to iterate through the sales table, and it's going to evaluate this expression, and it's going to keep only the rows where the quantity value is greater than one. And um, you know if if we had just done this expression without the count rows, we'd get an error here because it doesn't return a scalar value. The filter function returns um, a uh, table. Um, so if I just go ahead and now update our expression, this card will update. And so you know these are randomly generated, so there's not many that were were one. 
Um, and so we could also then just use this, this measure over here, put it in the table, um, and it'll give us the count. You see the, the total count here is the same as our card value. And uh, it's again, we have some filtering coming through the visual where the year and month are filtered from the date table. Um, from here, that is filtering, uh, uh, giving us a subset of rows where it's only those dates that are in that year and month. Uh, and then their measure is just calculating and evaluating how many of those rows were above um, one and uh, giving us the count of rows in that table, right? So again, that's a simple application of um, row context using the filter expression. And again, this is uh, the, the sumx express filter, the, uh, sorry, the sumx functions and the filter function are ones that we'll use all the time, okay? So those are simple demonstrations of row context, and now we're going to build on those uh, and talk about uh, filter context.